the biped speaking to you had the blessing of living with canine and feline friends. It's a true blessing, an unconditional source of love and happiness. Growing up with other species helps us understand. It leads to self-knowledge and understanding certain patterns that should be obvious. Correspondence, cause and effect, freedom, morality, and love must be strengthened in order to understand the esoteric connections we hold with our brothers, either winged, finned, or with many legs. And we should teach these patterns, engrave them in the collective psyche and consciousness. Teach our brothers that slavery is not moral. Pets are slaves. Pet owning is slavery. That is the deep truth. No being was born to serve or to be a slave of another. None. Only the free beings with enough evolution of consciousness are capable of serving others, providing an authentic service without expecting anything in return. All forced servitude, either because of hunger or domination, is slavery. And every unnatural forced conduct is slavery. Many feel the spiritual connection we have with our brothers of the animal kingdom. Most of us certainly cherish the beings we call pets. They make us happy. But this is not their natural state. They did not choose to obey us. They did not choose domestication. Domestication was forced upon them. We, shaved by pets, think ourselves as gods among the animal kingdom. Domestication is immoral. Each being has and lives for its own purpose in an interconnected chain of causes and patterns, a consciousness system network, maybe in some sort of a divine ladder. Each being yearns for freedom, at least subconsciously. Those of us born in captivity, either bipeds, four-legged, or others, may be compliant slaves and be under different levels of mind control. But deep within, we feel the call of freedom. It is a right bestowed by the source. Bottling up fish, caging birds, riding horses, fencing mammals is to enslave. It's criminal. Freedom is the absolute value of a being. Likewise, with dogs and cats, even though we love them and they love us back, they were not born to struggle in a concrete jungle or as we selfish bipeds call them, pets, that are actually nothing but a social scourge. Each earthling may have a violent or an easier life, but free and untamed, they harmonize within the morphogenetic fields of each species with its environment. They form part of cycles and are free. Some researchers talk about a probability that species like dogs and cats are alien to Earth, that they were introduced from elsewhere, or that they were genetically modified to adapt to us. Their origin is not as certain as evolution theories portray, though most accept their origins with family trees linking dogs with wolves domesticated by nomads about 32 to 15,000 years ago, 
and the cat, domesticated, about seven to 4,000 years ago in ancient Egypt. Some Gnostics mention that by living with us, they are lifted in their spiritual evolution, that we benefit them, or depending on the biped, we pervert them. I find the opposite dynamic much more attuned and objective. They benefit us. They help us to awaken, to find those connections, patterns, to find love. It's not that important knowing about the origins, family trees, or the probable genetic intervention of domestic species, a group in which we, shaved bipeds, are involved as possible perpetrators and victims. The important and unavoidable issue is morality. To instrumentalize creatures, that is immoral. If a being wants to be with us, then let it be. But forcing behaviors, restricting, limiting into unnatural environments, dominating, is not right. It is true that species like the Canis familiaris achieve an overwhelming emotional connection with us. But this is a common species argument as some sort of justification to enslave, torture, murder, and eating other animals. It is also true that if we breed and live by other species, as pigs, they will grow to love us and we will love them back. There is no intention in denying the important role dogs and cats have played in the biped history. They have been companions of most value in plague control, controlling animal populations that are hazardous to us bipeds. Also, their undeniable help in dangerous circumstances. They protect us. Some say they are a gift from the gods. I consider that the brothers and sisters that believe that the purpose of animals is to accompany or to serve us are confused and live in an anthropocentric dogma. They swear themselves to be the axis of creation, having the whole universe spinning around them. Legally, a pet or domestic animal is defined as a possession a belonging. And this diseased perception of beings as belongings is common among bipeds. We cannot own beings. No being belongs to another. Saying, I have a dog or I have a cat reveals the horrid truth. Having means owning a possession a domination dynamic. The pet may be very loved, but it is a slave. This domination dynamic is present. They can't and don't really choose what they want to do. What they are able to choose lays between a set of parameters we define. This means they choose the options we program into their psyche as the universe of possibilities that do not imply a punishment. It's similar to the biped that swears to be free because he or she can waste his value watching ball games and drinking alcohol, preferring not to enforce real freedom, something like speaking for the voiceless or fighting government, because that would imply a punishment or some discomfort. It is a universe of choices, limited to the fence the owners of the world set around us. It is a similar dynamic, but the biped pet is a herd species that has been indoctrinated by culture, 
and unlike animal pets, claims wholeheartedly to be free. Unlike animal pets, who know very well that they have owners and are dominated. The shaved biped pets are under mind control, have the Stockholm Syndrome, plead for their owners, advocate for the same system that strangles them, define circumstances that imply a punishment as requirements and just, thus generating the slave morality. The animal does not fool itself. It does not do what it wants, plainly because of the punishment or because it cannot jump over the fence. The existence of pets is but a reflection of a holographic cosmos, as so above, so below. We, shaved by pets, have been domesticated, enslaved. We are pets, and we do exactly the same with other species. We don't owe compassion to animals. We owe them justice. There are hundreds and thousands of poor souls on the streets of many cities. We owe them justice. The least we can do is give those beings a better life expectancy. Yes, this involves enslaving them, removing some of their freedom and making them pets, but giving them love and avoiding procreation. We must correct this mistake. This may sound harsh. Domestic animals must extinguish because of a genetic correction. They are no longer capable of being introduced into a wild environment. Or at least we must avoid the procreation until we achieve a level of consciousness enough to live by them without restricting their freedom. Until then, ridding them of our ignorance, our evil. They suffer in an unnatural environment. And if they have the great luck of finding some bipeds who love them, they spend their lives as slaves. Yes, they may be loved, but with restrictions. Generally, with unhealthy, unnatural diets and forced behaviors. We must stop the breeding of domestic animals. They do not form part of any system in cities or human settlements, at least not in the satanic spawns of concrete and apathy that are most cities. There are so many poor souls living cruel lives, living from our waste, submerged in impotence, in an aggressive environment they were not born to deal with. Depending on the zone, there may be some or many abandoned beings. For those of us who feel we don't have a friend, all we gotta do is head for a park, rural area, animal shelter, dog pound, or adoption center, carry some food with us, and we'll find a lone soul with a tail. Depending on the repetition of the routine, we may get a friend forever, until death, a friend with no psychopathy level, though possible traumas because of a horrid life. Consciousness sparks do not choose bodies. They are all the same race. They are all pure. They are pure love. They are not pets. They are our brothers.